Hello everyone and salam alaikum. Um, so today we are just going to go for a little picnic, a little walk around our local area. Um, so I'm just making a sandwich. Um, the weather's actually really nice so I'm trying to make the most of it. Um, so I'm just making a um, really simple English sandwich um, with cheese. Um, it's called a Plowman's um, but it's got uh, tomato cheese, some pickle and lettuce. Um, so I'm just going to finish off and then we'll go for a walk. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So we decided to have a little picnic today. Uh, the recipe to follow in today's video. Um, let it be a surprise because I myself don't know what um, I might be making later. Uh, this is a very uh, historic um, part of um, Cambridgeshire and um, this path leads to um, Roman paths which are very ancient and uh, once we're there we'll show you and um, I think Faye knows um, a lot about the history of Roman parts so she might share a few bits with you and we'll show you what it's like there. <laughs> of these Roman parts. Uh, these are the Roman parts. So on the sides are fields and mounds and um, on both sides actually if you see on this side as well. So it's very very ancient, lots of history. This was the road that uh, was used by Romans to uh, travel throughout the country and the villages and everywhere. taken a turn um, on Roman paths slightly on the left and uh, what uh, where would this lead to Faye? Um, so this is um, a nature reserve I think by the National Trust um, and it's called Wandlebury. Um, I've spent so many years as a child in this uh, in these woods um, but yeah, Wandlebury um, is a big nature reserve. There's all sorts of things um, and studies go go on here. Um, so we're just about to walk sort of into the nature reserve itself. Um, so it's a lovely little walk. Um, so we're just off the Roman roads now and heading towards the um, nature reserve. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just stop for a little picnic. Um, we'll have sandwiches that we made earlier, and then we'll continue. Where we? Uh, so there's a there's an orchard here. Um, I mean, this is quite a big um, nature reserve, but there is an orchard, so we might check that out. Um, but yeah, I think for now we'll just enjoy um, the view and um, and eat. <laughs> a very interesting tree. So if you see, um, are these roots of branches stone down in the ground fair? I think it's a branch. I think it's like either corner. And it's kind of yeah. sloping it. <laughs> I think it has made into a stand. <laughs> We're talking about this bit. It feels like it's supporting the rest of the tree not to Fall, at least from this angle, and um, quite a unique tree. I've never seen anything like this. So we're just enjoying some sun. Um, sun is out, and uh, it's really nice and warm. And Faye's doing some fact finding to share with you about Roman parts. Yeah, well, I just wanted to double check because I don't trust my um, my history really. Um, but um, so obviously, I well, if you didn't know, I grew up very close to here. Um, this is all very local to me. So basically, um, it's it's basically like a, a, the countryside, and it's made up of different villages, um, and they all kind of connect with these kind of Roman. Um, paths if you will um, so I was just having a look to see how much they date back because um, which would be around hopefully I say this right the Neolithical times which is about 5,000 years ago so that's a long time um, and I remember when um, I was at school um, during the time when I was at school there was a lot of um, uh, they took a lot of the buildings down and redeveloped them um, and I remember when I was a when I just started that school um, between the time where it, they were clearing all the building they actually had like um, uh, arch architects no uh -oh. sorry what are they called archaeologists uh, yeah they were like yeah. having a little sorry they were having a little look and um, to I see what they someone was making a building <laughs> <laughs> that would have come later to be fair but um yeah they um so they did a lot of archaeology yeah um on um on the grounds and actually myself and a few of my friends took part in it i don't think i really have any pictures or anything but um i was quite young and i it was sort of i was just interested because i'd lived here all my life and um they found all sorts of uh, skeletons, um, coins, pottery, all sorts. And actually, if you have um, sort of metal detectors and things, you can actually find loads of um, really nice ancient um, sort of little pieces, yeah, jewelry, <laughs> coins, jewelry, coins, jewelry, coins, yeah, um, and stuff. yeah. So that was really cool. So before I started that school, or I think maybe I was in the first year of that school, um, I already found out so much of this history of how um, people had lived before. Um, so that's why there's so many, there's so much history around here. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so I was just kind of having a little look. But um, so if you have, if you ever come around here and you have a metal detector, you might find some nice hidden gems. I've been lost for a long time. <laughs> so this is the um, sort of centre of Wandlebury um, and actually if you follow this track round um, it's called I think something like the circle and you can kind of do a full circle um, of um, 
Wandlebury, it's all amongst trees, it's really, really beautiful. I think it's a good few miles as well. Um, and I have done it as a child. I'm not gonna do it today, um, but it is lovely. And this little bridge as well is really cute. Um, but we're gonna go to the orchard instead today. Yeah, we're just about to enter the orchard now. Looks like they've um, put a few different apple trees along here as well, actually. You see those little crab apples or something here. beehives in here lots of apple trees as well So whenever we come to this orchard, um, we always pick some apples and um, um, we use those apples to um, make um, a very nice dessert, which I'm not going to share what it is at this point. <laughs> so today the apples, they're not um, uh, fully grown yet, they're not ripe. And um, so what we have decided is on the way back we might uh, stop at the village shop and uh, get some apples from there. And uh, today's recipe is a surprise we'll share with you later. So we'll just head it back home now. So on our way back we came across this very interesting piece of um, history and some people might be really interested. back from our walk um, and we are now going to make our surprise dessert um, so we are making apple crumble um, when you go like um, out into the forest um, or the woods and there's always um, you know little berries and apples um, it's not really the season but it always gets me in the mood for um, something like apple crumble um, so gonna make it today and um, so on the way back we picked up a few apples um, to use um, personally, I'm using these um, Granny Smith apples, which are probably not ideal. You'd want to probably use something like um, 
a cooking apple, um, which is much more sour and a little bit more firm. Um, so I've got a few more, I've got about 10, which I'm going to now peel and core. Um, but if you were to use sort of something um, like a cooking apple, I'd probably use around eight, um, maybe seven, eight. Um, but it's highly up to you. This is about um, how you would like to eat it. So some people like it really sweet, some people like it a little bit more sharp and also you can add any other fruit that you have in the cupboard as well. Um, so that's what I'm going to start to do and then I'll show you how else we prepare our apple crumble. <laughs> Finally, um, all nice and chopped um, apples. So I'm going to now start um, cooking them down. Um, so I'm just going to pop a pan on, um, sort of a medium heat, um, and in goes the apples. Um, I will share the ingredients as I go along um, and how much I'm using. Um, but as I said at the beginning, this is very much um, the kind of recipe that you can adjust to your sweetness preference um, and how, how you like it. Um, but I'm using um, about 10 apples. Um, I'm going to add, along with that, um, four cloves. Um, a lot of people like to use cinnamon, star anise, particularly around um, festive times, um, but I really like cloves. Um, particularly with apples. So I'm using four because they can be quite dominant um, in flavour, but just, just to kind of enhance that flavour. So that's a little bit of my recipe or mine and Omer's recipe um, that I'll share with you. Um, and just because apples can be slightly, well, you get different kinds of sweetness, I suppose, in apples, but I'm going to just add about um, a tablespoon of caster sugar. Um, and then I'm just going to taste it as I as they sort of cook down, just to see if it's sweet enough for my uh, preference. But probably start less and taste as you go through. Uh, there we go. And just to kind of help it along, I'm just going to add maybe just a tiny splash of water. Just a little bit, just to gather at the bottom so it doesn't start sticking. Um, and then I'm just going to let that come into more of like a puree form. You can have a little bit more of a bite to your apple, um, but I personally like the soft apple puree and then that crunchy uh, top um, is my preference. So, uh, next stage is to make the crumble. This is really easy and really simple. Um, so I have... Um, 225 grams of plain flour. So I'm just going to quickly quickly sieve this into a bowl. And the rule is that you want half fat to flour. So I'm also going to be um, adding uh, uns unsalted butter um, at room temperature, um, and that's about 120 grams, give or take. Um, and I'm just going to use my fingers um, to gently sort of mould it into breadcrumbs. That's the kind of consistency you want. So I'm just going to start by breaking up the butter and gently sort of folding it in until it gets to that consistency. <laughs> So that is all sort of blended in nicely and um, you can see it's um, quite similar to breadcrumbs. Some are slightly thicker for that little bit more of a texture um, but it's all crumbled in really nicely. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to wash my hands and then I'll add the sugar. 
So I'm about to add the sugar. I'm using brown sugar, which is demer demerara sugar. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but I really like to use brown sugar just because it kind of gives that goldeny colour on the top of your crumble, which I think just kind of makes it so much more inviting and a little bit more tasty, perhaps. Um, so I'm using 100 grams. I'm just going to pour this in now. Um, this is to your taste again, so just change um, measurements accordingly. Um, but I'll probably just add uh, probably majority of it. Let's see how that goes. I'm just going to stir this in with a spoon. Just add the rest. And now I'm just going to wait for my apples to. Um, create that form and then we'll be able to put it together and pop it into the oven. The apples are coming along nicely and um, there's just a few still in its form um, but you can see that it's coming a little bit more like a puree now um, and I have also just tasted it and I'm really happy with the amount of sugar I've added um, so I'm just going to give it another five minutes just to wait for those bigger pieces to um, break down and then I think we'll be ready to um, put the apple crumble together. So it is um, in that form that I like, so it's um, a nice puree. So I'm now just going to transfer this to a bowl. So I'm literally just adding um, the apples to a baking tin. There's no need to grease it, it won't stick to the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to add um, enough um, so that I have room for the crumble on top. Um, I'm just going to smooth it down. Smells lovely. So next is going to be the crumble. So what you want to do is cover the top and then begin to press down. This will kind of give you that little bit more of a thicker crumble on top. So I'm just going to add as much, as much as you want really, but I like quite a nice thick crumble on top. Make sure you get into those corners. So that is now pressed down really nicely, it's going to give a really nice thick crumble. Um, just to uh, help sort of let the top catch as it goes into the oven and make it a little bit more crispy, I'm just taking this fork, as you can see, and just gently, really lightly, just um, grazing the top. Um, and that will just kind of let those little bits um, become nice and crispy, um, and I think it just kind of gives it a really nice finish. So I'm going to pop this into the oven now, um, 180 degrees Celsius, uh, middle shelf for about 30 minutes. So the apple crumble has baked really well uh, for about 30 minutes um, and you can see it's got a nice um, colour on top um, and it is ready to serve. It is best served hot so I'm going to now just tuck in and Nice apple filling. Now for some custard. I 
can't wait any longer, so I'm tucking in. Careful, it's very hot. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. The apples are perfect sort of tartness and the nice sweet custard and crispy top is just giving it a nice sweetness and texture. I really hope that you enjoyed our little recipe and our video today. Uh, do subscribe and like this video um, and we'll see you again very soon with another one. Uh, so take care and goodbye for now.